How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the party. Now, I know what you guys are all thinking. Some party this is, but that is not important right now. What is important is finding what the best Mario Party is. Wait, what? There's 16 different Mario Party games now? I thought there was like 10. I didn't agree to this. Well, because I didn't want to leave a single game out, we are including all 16 of them in this massive ranking video in order to come to a conclusion at the end and find out which is the best Mario Party. Now, this video took quite a bit of time and editing to make, so if you could like the video, that would be great because there are more Mario ranking videos to come. So if you think you'd like videos such as those, then consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, I reveal the next ranking video at the end of this one. Okay, all this out the way, let's get ranking. So we have a bunch of different Mario Party games to rank today. And I even had to make new number transitions because I only had up to 10. So this means we are going to be moving at a quicker pace than usual. And this also means that the game that's worse than all 15 other games really must suck. Mario Party Advance. What is this game? Why was it even made? This is like a spin-off game for a spin-off series. Huh? Tell me, what is the best part about Mario Party? Playing with your friends and some occasional randomness thrown in there to allow the game to be more even for all players. Mario Party Advance is only a single player game. That kind of makes the mini games a lot less fun since you're not going head to head with other people. And the board is kind of messed up now because you're just focused on moving yourself. The randomness is here though, but it's more frustrating now because it's only you that can get random bad luck in a game. This doesn't make sense to have in a single player game because it randomly and unfairly sets you back for no reason. The game is a little charming how it introduces a bunch of unique characters in the Mushroom Kingdom that have problems for you to solve, but man, charm alone can't save a game. Okay, so we just started with a not so great handheld Mario Party. This must mean the home console versions are better, right? Now we have Mario Party 9. The big new addition and change here is that everyone doesn't move on their own, but they're all in this one car. And ironically enough, this is the biggest problem with the game. So how does one change ruin the game you ask? Well, since you all move together, you cannot plan your route through the board because the majority of your movement is based on other players dice rolls. You only move the cart once every four turns. This also means you won't race to beat other players to certain stars like in previous games, but now it's more of who's in the front of the cart when you cross these mini stars. And because everyone's together, the boards are now incredibly linear with one path in most cases. Gone are the interesting and weaving routes from previous Mario Party boards and in come the straight line boards. Okay. All this stuff really just makes the game more about randomness and less about skill, more than any other Mario Party before. They really oversimplified the concept of Mario Party. Another point that supports this would be how they got rid of stars and coins and just kind of combined them into mini stars. This removes even more depth in the game. The mini games were kind of fun, that's like the one redeeming feature, but the game boards that hold them together were a mess. So yes, with Mario Party 9, they tried to change the series in a new way, but it didn't end up working out that well. Luckily, with its sequel, they had a chance to fix all the mistakes that 9 had. <laughs> oh no, they did it again with Mario Party 10. Did you like the gameplay of Mario Party 9? What's that? No? Well, here's more of it. Literally all of the problems with the game boards and being in one car all apply here as well. Don't know why they did it again, to be honest. These two games were pretty similar for me. They're both not all that great. The one thing that this does slightly better though are its extra modes. The big push this time was this new Bowser mode and it was all right. Remember guys, I said slightly better. I do really like the concept though, an asymmetric Mario Party mode that just puts Bowser against Mario characters, where Bowser's on the gamepad and everyone else is on the TV. However, the execution was not the greatest. It is way too unbalanced. Bowser has a way easier time than everyone else. He will catch up to your cart, no doubt. The mini games were pretty decent in this one though. Then there's Amiibo Party that promises to give you a taste of the classic Mario Party gameplay. And they do, 
But the boards are just a square, and you need an amiibo just to play it. It's a very dull mode. These two games tried something new, but really took Mario Party in a weird direction that wasn't well received, and unsurprisingly, has never gone back to this concept since. Okay, no more cars after those two games. Seriously, I'm walking home from work from now on. Let's move on to a game that seems promising on paper with a hundred of the best Mario Party minigames in one game. This is, of course, Mario Party The Top 100. And yes, it is featuring the best 100 minigames from every Mario Party in the series. The best ones according to, well, someone I guess. I mean, there's a few of the great ones like Hexagon Heat and Book Squirm, but then they just felt the need to include Crank to Rank and Mecha Marathon? No, that one sucks in fact. All you do is mash buttons. Mario Party Top 100? Psh! More like Mario Party 33 from the top, 33 from the middle, 33 from the bottom, and Mecha Marathon. Okay, point being, these really weren't the best 100 Mario Party minigames. Maybe they should have had a fan poll or something to ask the players what their favorite games were. I mean, that's what Sakurai does when picking which fighters to add in Smash Brothers, so it would have made sense here. And I don't know why they decided to release this for the 3DS. These games were made for different consoles, so they can feel a bit weird when playing on this tiny handheld controller. Plus, the Switch was already out at this point, so it makes even less sense. And besides the minigames, there is, well, one board. Yeah, you heard that right. Like, come on, you can't just include one board. I get it, the focus was to have the best Mario Party minigames in one game, but as well as the questionable choice of those games, Mario Party can't rely on minigames alone. So we are not done with the 3DS Mario Party games just yet, because we have two more left, in fact and one of them we are talking about right now. And now we come to Mario Party Island Tour for the 3DS. Due to the criticisms of having everyone in one cart through a linear board in Mario Party 9, they changed it so everyone could move on their own again. Great, but they still kept the linear boards and the combination of stars and coins into mini stars that people didn't like. What? I thought they had to make the boards linear to have mini stars because of how the cart works. So why remove the cart and keep everything else the same? That makes no sense. Now the game's even slower because you're just watching all four players move through the same patch of the board four times in a row because that's the only way everyone can go. Seriously, the boards are terrible in this game. Who made these? I mean, okay, at least there's mini games at the end of every turn still, and for the most part, the mini games are fun. They make good use of the 3DS since the games are designed for the system, but the boards are slow and boring. You enjoy walking in a straight line? Then you'll enjoy the boards. We've mostly been looking at the recent Mario Party games so far, so why don't we go back a bit more in time? Like, really far back in time to the very start of the entire series. Mario Party 1. Ho <laughs> oh, ho, Mario Party 1. While not the worst game, this is the least polished game for sure. Since it was the original, a lot of the mistakes are down to them just testing the waters, let's say, but that doesn't make the game any better now, does it? The boards were actually decent. They were all based off a different character in the roster that each had their own unique level gimmick of sorts. There wasn't really a bad board in this game, and all the level layouts are interesting to explore and traverse. They could feel a bit samey, but you know, first game in the series, so minor point. The mini games, on the other hand, was where the game's issues lie. Still though, there were some fun ones that even hold up today, such as Bombs Away or even Facelift. However, a lot of the 1 vs 3 games heavily favored the one side, making it really easy or unfairly hard. There were also a bunch of random one player games that took way too long to do while everyone else just watched that one player. And of course, the rotating the control stick mini games. These might be the worst in the whole series. All you do is rotate the control stick for the entire game. Not only was this not fun, but it actually got painful. Okay, so I know this is pretty well known at this point, but it's too hilarious not to mention this. Since the N64 control stick was hard plastic, people actually got blisters and their hands were in pain from these rotating control stick minigames. So much so that people sued and Nintendo actually had to provide them with gloves to the injured players. <laughs> I mean, come on, like, what were you thinking, guys? Okay, next game, let's move on. 
So we just took a break from the Mario Party 3DS games, but that was short-lived because we are now looking at the last one on the 3DS, Mario Party Star Rush. This game introduces a lot of new ideas. Not saying they all land as good ideas, but there's a lot of new ones. The closest mode to normal Mario Party is this thing called Toad Scramble, and I'd say it's actually fun. Instead of boards, we got grids, meaning you just have to follow a traditional path like the boards before, but you can move in any direction on the grid. And everyone moves at the same time, which really increases the pacing. You try and race to the bosses this time, which kind of act like the mini games and the star on the map. A really interesting feature is that whoever reaches the boss first gets a head start in the mini game, allowing them to get more points to get more stars and coins. This is a really fun way of rewarding players who do well, but still allowing others to catch up if they're good enough. Other than this mode though, there were, uh, there, there's this like rhythm mode that has very little input. It's pretty boring and way too simple, let's say. The other game is Coinathon, which was a bit better. I mean, all you really do is play a bunch of mini games where when you get a coin, you can progress, but there wasn't really too much to these specific boards though. You just play a bunch of coin mini games, one after another. And this game in general just didn't have that many mini games. Plus the ones they did have weren't that great. But that's not to say there still are some fun modes in this one. <laughs> GameCube, I don't know why it has so many Mario Party games, but that's besides the point, because now we are looking at the worst of the GameCube games. This would have to be Mario Party 5, and this is when the series of games just kind of hit a standstill. It's really a game that just existed because they needed another Mario Party. I mean, it's an alright Mario Party game, but there are some things it does worse even than the games that came before it. It strips away previous elements from previous games so it can feel like a bare bones experience. I'll give you an example. They added these orbs of sorts, which on paper were actually a new and interesting idea. You can either use them on yourself or or plant them on other spaces to screw over opponents that land on them. Only problem is, these now take the place of items, so there's no way to choose what items to buy, you just randomly get a capsule from these machines, making it less strategic. And since you plant them on a space, they removed a lot of the other fun spaces that used to be on the boards. These include dueling spaces, the bank, chance time, and even booze space that you could steal stars or even coins. They're all gone now. But for the most part, the minigames were polished and played out well. Except for the 1 vs 3 minigames which were incredibly unbalanced, so yeah. The board layouts were a great improvement though. This time, for the first time in the series, the board path intertwined and weaved in the 3D landscape. Whereas in the previous games, it was just a grid above the 3D environment. And before that, it was just a 2D image, so these are the best looking boards we've seen so far. We are now officially halfway through this lengthy list and just have the top half of Mario Party games left to go. We've already looked at 8 of them and we have 8 more left. Speaking of 8, Mario Party 8. I've actually heard a lot of people hate this game and say it's the worst Mario Party game. And I'd say it's definitely not a bad game. It's just kind of an average one, really. There's a few creative boards in here this time. A non-linear ghost house, a vertical winding DK village, and they just threw in Monopoly in the game, which was actually very fun in Mario Party. The mini games were a bit hit or miss though. There definitely still are fun ones in the game for sure, but in many occasions, the bad ones, you just had to shake the Wii remote randomly the whole time. Or just crank a flagpole, ooh. Yeah, this was a product of Wii-itis. A symptom I just made up, but it is where the games that launched right by the Wii's release date just kind of threw in motion controls for the sake of throwing in motion controls. So the bad mini games suffer from this. Not saying there aren't good motion controls in here, but most are questionable. Okay, so this game's not groundbreaking, but it does its job at being a Mario Party, and there wasn't really any terrible design choices, so that's why it's just middle of the pack. This next game here was actually a really anticipated game for me, and it is the most recent game that I am talking about today. This is Super Mario Party. 
This is a very interesting addition to the series, to say the least. It has to be like the most refreshing Mario Party we've seen. And it provided a decent attempt to correct the direction the series was headed in. The minigames, for starters, were actually awesome and the best part of this. They used a lot of the Switch features like HD Rumble to create a game that simply can only be possible on the Switch. That is great. Even the other games that used normal controls were great too. This game did kind of stray away from the board game being the main focus though, with adding a lot of other modes that had various degrees of enjoyment. There was this watercraft mode, which was a lot of fun, kind of like Teamwork Mario Party that had unique team games for this mode. There was also this music-based mode where all the games you had to time your actions to a beat or a song, and this was fun too. However, they introduced online to this game, but like Nintendo and online, they don't mix well. You can only play just the mini games online and none of the boards, which is really dull in that case. And they had a single player mode, but that was very basic too. Also, with all this focus on the other modes, the main boards weren't all that great to be honest. They kinda sucked in fact. Like look at this, they're just so small and grid-like, they don't wind around the environment like before. The boards just felt very bland, that's really it. This game does have a lot of charm though, with its interactive menu hub and all the stuff going on in the backgrounds, and is a very fun game, but there is still room for improvement. <laughs> The next game here is often forgotten when talking about Mario Party games, but it is definitely a great one for sure. This is Mario Party on the DS. It's called, of course, Mario Party DS. This was a game that most people actually skipped, maybe due to how poor the previous handheld Mario Party was, but it was actually a great underrated Mario Party, and I'd say was the best handheld Mario Party. They had the universal theme of everything, well, just being tiny, and they utilized this theme very well to just give this game its own style. All the boards play into this, such as having you explore someone's flower garden, or being in a room of instruments. I always like when they have themes like this implemented into Mario Party. Or maybe this game just reminds me of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That might be it too. Who knows? And even most of the minigames use this theme by having you surf on leaves down a railing of a staircase or having you roll around in this little sandbox. Plus, the minigames were just great in general. The gimmick of the DS was the touchscreen, and it was one of Nintendo's better gimmicks, so it was great to see how it was used in various games. Honestly, if you haven't played this one, I would definitely give it a try. <laughs> So we haven't been talking about the GameCube nearly enough considering the amount of Mario Parties on the system. And as you can see, a lot of them are still in the ranking. The one we are talking about now is Mario Party 4. Oh yeah, and it was the first one to be released on the GameCube. The best part of this game are the minigames, easily. This had to be some of the most original minigames in the series so far. While other games in the series adopted and tweaked certain minigames from previous Mario parties, this time it really just felt like brand new ideas were brought into the series. Maybe they wanted to make use of the new hardware on the GameCube, or maybe not. I don't know. I don't work at Nintendo. Why are you asking me for? The balancing was also really good in the minigames, meaning the outcome would most likely be to skill rather than luck, which is always good in Mario Party. This game really just took a lot of things that made the Nintendo 64 classics great and tweaked it slightly. A bit of a complaint about this one though are the boards. This was their first attempt at making 3D Mario Party boards, so I guess they didn't really know how to do it because, well, the boards just kind of float over the environment, and they're all grid-based. This is a really big downgrade from all the previous games so far, where you would actually weave around in the different objects on the board. Other than that though, this game did everything right. The next one here is a classic Mario Party experience, a game that is held at such a high pedestal, and I can see why. This is Mario Party 2. It's crazy how great they got a Mario Party game to be in just the second entry of the series. They really learned from the first game just keeping everything that worked and threw away all the crappy parts. Plus they added a bunch of great new features too that just became staples of the entire series. 
They introduced battle minigames, duel minigames, and even items, which were great because they gave more use for the coins. I also really liked how they went all out with the theming here. Every board is based on a different movie genre. Horror, western, space, they're all here and interesting as boards. Even all the characters dress up for the boards as well as Bowser and the duel minigames are changed to reflect this theme. This is a great attention to detail that even new Mario Party games don't do. This game is like no frills, but a very great Mario Party experience. Like does it have all the extra modes or characters as some of the new ones? Nope. But everything that it does, it gets right. Some of the best mini games in the whole series are here, and all the boards play out very well. We just talked about a classic one, Mario Party 2, so let's roll the clocks forward a few years and talk about lucky number 7. Mario Party 7 This one's cool because you travel the world. It really wasn't that revolutionary or different from, well, all the other games at this point, but it took what worked in the previous entries and combined it all into one very solid game, and the last one on the GameCube era. Like I said, you travel across the world in this game, and that is just a great Mario Party theme. From Venice to New York, and Netherlands to, uh, Bowser, Bowserland. Yep, they used all real world locations here. And all of these locations are pretty detailed with the side characters dressing up in outfits from their locations. The mini games were a lot of fun too, and they just all control great this time. I mean, okay, this game did kind of feel like they were starting to run out of ideas with some of the mini games and boards, but other than that, it is one of the most polished Mario Party games in the series. <laughs> Well, just two more games left. We have come a long way in this massive Mario Party ranking video, and it was a fun time to get here. Well, mostly. So I am gonna announce the runner-up, Mario Party 6. Yes, this game was actually surprisingly good. The main mechanic was really unique, and I like how they stuck with it for everything in this game. This is, of course, the day and night cycles. After every three turns, it would switch the time of day to either day or night, depending on which one you're currently on. This would change visually how the board looks, as well as various paths and mechanics would be modified. Plus, I just like the look at nighttime. And even the mini games would change between two different versions. In some cases, it wasn't even a visual thing, but the games would actually play out differently than before. They went all out with this mechanic. Also, some of the boards introduced a lot of much needed fresh and creative ideas to Mario Party. Like look at this snowflake lake map where everyone starts off with five stars, but you gotta use chain chomps to run over your opponents and steal their stars. That's a refreshing take on a board, I'll tell you that. The items were fun to use too. They fixed the orbs from the previous Mario Party, which greatly hindered that game. They act a bit more like traditional items while still being able to place them on certain spaces. And hey, there's this like new single player minigame unlocking game where you would just have to cash out the minigames you've unlocked before reaching the end. There are a lot of fun modes and games here and just a great Mario Party overall. <laughs> Oh yes, Mario Party 3 is the best one. This game was like an upgrade of Mario Party 2, which was pretty well an upgrade of the original Mario Party, so it's like you are playing an upgrade of an upgrade with this one. The first upgrade are the items. You can hold up to three of them now, which is a staple that would remain in the series. This allowed each player to use more strategy and options for their turns, and they just added a bunch of new items as well. So much so that they separated them into two different item stores. The mini games were pretty fantastic too. Sure, there were a few bad ones, but of course that's gonna happen with over 70 brand new mini games introduced this time. Don't believe me? Well, just look at the box. They really wanted you to know that. So there is a lot of variety here. Plus I thought the game was just really well balanced. Not even just the mini games, but all the randomness and the boards as well. There was a very good variety and amounts of spaces to land on on the different boards. Also this game had like a pop-up book theme going for it, kinda like Yoshi's Story, and it was a great theme choice as well. Okay, party's over. This was a fun ranking, but I think we need to move on to the next series. And for the next ranking video, I gotta get out of the city for a bit and move to the country. The Donkey Kong Country. See you guys then.